Good evening, everybody. Nice spring evening here in PA with the chance of a thunderstorm tonight, which will be good because I'm trying to plant all the plants on the hillside on the bank going toward the barn to keep it from eroding all the way down to the barn. Okay, as we can see, the market is still in the wedge formation. Thursday, big scary day, but where did it come back to? Right about the bottom of the trend channel, or the uh, wedge formation. Third Friday, took it right back up. Bullish Rame basically told us that the selling had stopped. So now the next prospect is to see if they can break it out to the upside. Now keep in mind, the longer this sideways pennant formation or wedge formation sets up, the bigger the magnitude of when, uh, when they break out either to the upside or the downside, that move will be substantial. So you just get ready for it and plan accordingly. The S&P 500 In that same scenario, there's doing this wedge. Whoops. Hold on for a second. I had to turn the fan on. It's getting a little bit sticky here right before this big storm. Okay, and the NASDAQ. Still in this channel, and as we can see, when it came to the bottom of the channel, right here at the 50, they bounced it back up again. So what's, where's the next prospect? Back up to the top of the channel. Now, measuring this tells us if they can take the NASDAQ back up to the top, top of the channel, and there's a good possibility they can take the Dow up through this level. So this is why you want to keep watching to see if the strength stays in the market, if it comes back up here and then does another shooting star type thing, that keeps that would tell you immediately they're failing at this level. Crude oil prices, we're long, and we'll stay long as long as it stays up above the T-line. Days have not been reversal signals, just kind of backing and filling. But as long as we're above the T-line, we stay long. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Ten-year notes still backing off, which means interest rates are going up a wee little bit, but probably not to any great degree. And gold. Gold right now, ah, would not be long or short. There are times when you can look at a chart and say to yourself, I have no idea what this chart is telling me, that means move on to something else until the chart tells you what, what they're doing. Uh, the dollar has been backing off a little bit, but now slowly trying to climb back up to the T-line. Wouldn't trade the dollar just yet until you get a con confirmation that it's going to close above the T-line. And what else do we usually look at? Oh, we've been short wheat because it's been in this downtrend. Not doing anything real decisive down here, but as you can see, there's nothing yet to tell us oh, that the buyers have stepped in, that this downtrending channel is still in progress. And what else? Everything else, um, lean hogs, for example, gotten up here to where it's kind of waffling. There really isn't any direction. However, from what it looked like, it had an up day, which means if it starts trading positive tomorrow, you got that little J hook 
and wave one and wave three could take you up to the 200-day moving average. Would you buy gold mining stocks if the charts look good? Yeah, there was a few that uh, we started looking at. I'll jump real quick over to one. Uh, well, that's Century Aluminum. Uh, there was a couple more that looked like they were all right. Uh, I don't know. Does anybody know why cyber is down two and a half points after hours? Let's take a gander. Let's take a look over here. The bid is down two and a half points or so. The ask is still uh, down a little bit, so I wouldn't I wouldn't call that anything major. So, yeah, what was I? Okay, yeah, we're on. The, no, we're on the wrong chart. That's what's happening. We figured it out here. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about the after-hour trading. Uh, yeah, the real important time is three minutes before it opens. You'll know what the big boys are doing at that point. Okay, some of the ones that we've been keeping an eye on. ESPR has been moving sideways, but now looks like it's got a little scoop pattern in progress. So you want to keep an eye on this one, especially if they can break out through this wedge, the top of the wedge. It might be another slingshot effect like this. Uh, so you want to keep an eye on that one. Uh, still own CEVO. Why do these charts flatten out like this? I've still got a good looking chart and notice the uh, doji sandwich breakout. And today they opened it at the 3T line and anytime you're trading above the 3T, you know you still got a lot of strength in that uh, position. With crude oil, kind of holding its own. Stocks like BPT is heading exactly for the target we would expect it to, the 200-day uh, moving average. And Whiting also has been holding up well. Coming out of this slow curve pattern, notice what it does every day. It comes back and uses the uh, T-line as a support and then bounces up. Uh, GNW has been working very well. You continue to stay long on this. There's going to be a 45 degree with the expected target up here at the 200-day moving average. Let's see, we did whiting. Gimo. Gimo looks like it's in a step stone. Moves up, moves sideways. Moves up, moves sideways. But that still shows good strength. They take it up, consolidate. As long as this one, notice that this one's still trading above the 3T, let alone the T-line. Uh, if you haven't got into this one, very simple. Put your buy stop right up here, somewhere around the 3050 area. But if it pops up through that level, that means it's going up the next, uh, next level. So these are kind of little things that you can watch to take advantage of a pattern getting set up uh, for the next move. Aha uh -huh. is still a nice looking chart. Notice the inverted hammer, morning star signal. And look where your doji occurred, right smack dab where it's been at its high. Makes this very simple. If it opens positive tomorrow, you've got that doji sandwich breakout situation. So that's, and notice what the strength of this move is coming from. This little kicker signal that broke it out of the fry pan bottom. Oh uh, yeah, Gimmo, uh, Right now, it isn't showing any reason. Oops. You know, as I say, you're moving sideways. Look for a ne next strong move uh, out of here. I, I call that the step uh, step stone type move, where they move it up, trade flat, move it up, trade flat. Tahoe, you stay long on this one. 
Am I doing this or are the charts doing this? Stay long on this one. At this point, with that being up in the overbought condition and a kind of a, a doji spinning top, if it traded back below today's low, I'd probably take some profits with the expectation they're going to bring it back down to the T-line. Barry, we'll get to all the uh, individual ones. A lot of those you'll probably see before we even get, get to the end. Uh, when I tell Jim to do the double line, that's when you put in your uh, request. And we usually try to, I don't want to hold it to at least just two requests per person just so we can get them all done. CJES, another uh, oil stock acting well. Uh, we're staying long on this one. Cyber, even if it's down two points, it's still trading up above the uh, T-line. And we're just holding this as long as it stays above the T-line. All right, do we have VDSI in here? VDSI was uh, yeah choppy, needed to get back up through this level. So if it opens positive, you can see that it's got this as your first target, the top of the channel, and see if they can break through that, that level. We did cyber, we did all of those. Now some of the biggies, Amazon. Amazon is doing what we would expect it to be doing, pulling back to the T-line, and now looking for it to move uh, back up on a J-hook pattern, especially if they open up positive. Now you will have a hammer, a Rami, off the T-line, followed by an inverted hammer. And remember, if they open up positive after an inverted hammer, you've got extremely high probabilities, like 95% or greater, that you're going to go higher. And very simple. If you buy it on positive trading, that other wee little percentage that it doesn't work is if it comes back down to the bottom of today's trading. You close it out immediately. Uh, AGEN, same scenario. Inverted hammer after, did we already do this one? If this opens positive tomorrow, you want to be buying immediately. We recommended ALTR either today or must have been Friday. Oh, where the heck did it go? Thought we recommended it. You ready to buy this if it comes back up through the high of uh, Friday? That tells you the gap up is now in progress. Your little left-right combo. Bullish confirmation with a close above the T-line. little scoop-type pattern. When you say the bottom of the trading, are you including the wicks? No, just the, the trading area. And remember, the wicks are not as important as where they opened it and where they closed it. Oh, uh, on an inverted hammer, usually there's not very much wicks to the downside. That's what you were referring to, Lori. But whether it's you're using the wick or the uh, the open or the close of yesterday, they open this positive. It shouldn't come back down through either one of these areas. You just close it out. Yeah, uh, and these are close enough. You can e use either war as your stop. Or Tahoe, Tahoe, yes. This is now that's a different signal. That's your spinning top uh, doji in the overbought condition. Now you use the uh, low of today. But if it comes back down through there after a spinning top doji, it tell you, tells you which direction they're uh, they're going. Yes, on the uh, dojis, it's I usually use the low of the day on. Yes, on Tahoe. All right, we did see an X. Netflix still has not been able to close below the T-line. Now, we're not in it right now because when it started showing some 
from selling, where did we expect it to come back to? Either moving sideways to the T-line caught up or moving down. So this makes it a very simple trade. Notice the little trend channel. I hate that thing. If it starts trading up here, that tells you exactly what's happened. They support it on the T-line, and they're going to now start taking it higher. And Apple. Apple looks like it's doing this fry pan bottom whipsaw. I'd still be buying Apple on positive trading because it's not unusual out of a fry pan bottom to see it sell off and then do whipsaw real quick and then start right back up again. So just because it got didn't confirm here, it still had this big formation. Don't rule it out. You keep it on your watch list. Okay, a few others that look uh, good. BF, BSFT. Anytime you see that major gap up, look for a 45 degree to come off of there. And ARRY, there's your doji gap up. And remember our simple rule of the doji. It's going to move in the direction of how they open after the doji. If they open this positive, you want to be buying, because not only does that tell you that they're moving positive after a doji, but they're telling you that this is not going to act as a resistance level. You've probably got some strong upside. And the reason you have strong upside is because basically you've got one of the strongest signals, a doji followed by a gap up coming out of the oversold condition. FRSS, fresh. Another doji, 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 breaking the downward trend channel, wave one, wave two, going into wave three. All right. Uh, we did a day trading session not too long ago. So these are the setups that we're looking for. One of the best ones is our doji sandwich. CLD, Cloud Peak Energy. Notice what it did on Friday. It did a doji right smack dab on the uh, 50 coming out of this bullish confirmation. What's our simple rule of a doji? If it opens positive, you buy immediately. What's the magnitude of this candle right here likely to be? Same magnitude as this right here. So this makes for excellent day trades or swing trades for getting in at the right time or option trades. Bill, I'm pretty sure that the uh, day trading session was recorded. Yeah, they're all recorded. So that's why right before the close, I started buying some more calls on SWKS. Because notice what it's done. Right smack dab off the 50, it did a kicker signal. And then it opened positive today, breaking through this level. What's going to happen tomorrow? If they open up positive, they're going to have another day like this, which means that day alone will be pretty hefty. And it's pretty much telling us we've broken through this level. We're in wave three, which is going to be somewhat along the same magnitude as this one right here. So when I see something set up like this and everything is going positive, the stochastic's coming up, a strong buy signal, a breakout, I start buying right on the close because there's not only a good possibility it's going to open positive and trade positive, there's a good possibility you could gap up and start trading positive. Oh, CLG, I would, if you're long, I would stay long, and I wouldn't even be afraid to be buying here. Because coming out of this big fry pan bottom, through the 50 on a doji sandwich, where do you think your next target is going to be? Your first target is going to be at the beginning of the fry pan bottom. Second target, more than likely your 200-day moving average. Trove, uh, Trove had a little bit more of a doji on the other charts, but notice doji, 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 bullish confirmation, and now we're right here at the resistance level. You can buy this one on positive trading, uh, showing that they'd break out through this level. Oh, there's a couple more. And who wrote this? Terrible handwriting. Uh, TACO, 
inverted hammer, Harami, gap up. Where are we sitting right now? Smack dab on the highs. If it opens positive, you're in wave three, which could be a fairly hefty move. And watch this one, RTI. We recommended this one today on a positive open. Did kind of a doji day. You've got this big fry pan bottom. If they start trading this positive tomorrow, you want to be buying. Because if that is a doji sandwich, you're going to close up here, breaking out, possibly with another move like this over the next few days. Now, the doji at the top means sell. If you're in the overbought condition and you see a doji at the top after a good uptrend, yes, you get ready to sell. If it's a gap up doji in the overbought condition, usually I'll take off half the position. If it opens lower the next day I'm coming out, if it continues to go higher, that means I'm in a high-risk trade. So I probably took off half the position where I had good profits, and I'm still contributing or getting profits from the other half of position. Um, as RTI has pending offer, okay, that's what I kind of thought. Um, but if it opens positive... It's telling you they're still buying it for some reason, even though there is, a, is an offer out there, a pending offer, which also could mean if they're expecting an offer, the other side of the coin is they're going out and trying to find a white knight to come in and uh, um, help counter that offer so they get more than one bidder in there. Oh, there's Jim. Yeah, we couldn't see you in red. That's right. All right, we also recommended in the chat room today buy this one because you had kind of that doji sam or a flutter kicker. A big down day, they gapped it up to an indecisive day, then opened positive. You want to be buying this one on positive trading. Because you also have that cup and handle setup that if they can get through this level, you've got some good upside potential. Out same thing was happening in PACB. Kicker signal, doji, right smack dab off the 50. If it opens positive, you have a kicker signal followed by a doji sandwich. That's going to show you a lot of strength. Oh, yeah. I think Tazar was also in that same setup. Notice the uh, flutter kicker signal. Down day, gapped it up, did an indecisive day, then went positive. We got wave one, wave two, you're in wave three right now. Okay, some more that look good. FENG, FANG, there's your J hook pattern, there's your next target. OCN, nice fry pan bottom with a gap up. Trend kicker gap up. I'd be a buyer of this one. They're right now at the breakout level. Let's see. They open positive. They're in the gap. Got a good good runner to this one. Feng Feng F E N G. Bang, which not pang. Yeah, I'm gonna be out for Monday and Tuesday, maybe Monday of next week for some maintenance surgery. Nothing serious. But unfortunately I got one doctor that's gonna be doing most of it. And his name is Doctor Ping Pang, which doesn't give me any great confidence, but less confidence. I've got uh, another doctor that's going to be doing a little cutting near my voice box, and her name is Dr. Yips. I just don't like to have a doctor that has the yips. They're cutting myself, so what did I just do? 
Oh, and we did OCN. Coppers. That's right. Coppers, uh, obvious target now is the 200-day moving average, KOP. Uh, run, rental centers, that's a very strong chart. They've gapped it up through the 200, came back to the 200, used it as support. Next target is here. And more than likely, with enough this amount of gapping up, they can probably take it all the way back up to test the new highs. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that the other day uh, that I could have a doctor named Dr. Payne. Payne. That's usually a dentist. Another slow curve on G-O-N-G. That has a good likelihood of going to the 200-day moving average. A little slow curve here, and you can see you got a big fry pan bottom setup. Is this all for day trading? No, this is for everything. Um, Dr. Whoops. <laughs> um, this is so that you can set up. We're not trying to show anybody how to trade or what type of trading to do. Um, we're just trying to show people how to learn to analyze the charts so they can assimilate the type of trading they want to do with the correct charts. So there are some people out there in our chat room that are day traders, there are other people that are swing traders, and there's others that are long-term investors. And long-term uh, investors that are in the uh, long-term service, I'll be coming out with a recommendation on a small company that has uh, kind of developed a, I guess what you call a universal credit card that you can use over your... Uh, phones and the advantage to it is that as soon as you do your transaction the transaction disappears so there's no nobody can find it to the fraud and that company's getting a little bit of interest I think from Apple well that'll be in the uh, long-term picks uh, area here in the next couple of days TD or T E D U left right combo right off the 200 day moving average. Look for wave one, wave two. If they open this positive, they're confirming the left right. They're confirming that it's staying above the T line, and they're breaking out through this downtrending channel. That's a good one too. Yep, that. Uh, I'm still waiting for. For uh, AutoZone to call me the other day or yesterday, I bought a bunch of stuff there, and, and as the there's a flutter kicker on ANFI, they're ready to buy this one on positive trading. Notice that the downtrending channel is broken. Uh, no, this that's not the same one. Uh, trade, or, uh, Greg, that's going into the uh, long-term picks area. Uh, o and D. Okay, little morning star signal. Where did it occur? Right about the same level they bottomed out before. Where did it close? Right on the T line in the 50. If it opens positive, it's confirming the morning star signal and telling you those are not going to be, uh, oh, man, what happened? That the uh, 50 and the uh, T line are not going to be resistance anymore. SGMS. Notice where this, it closes after an inverted hammer, doji, goes right at the resistance level. Makes it very simple. If it opens positive, we're starting wave three, which will be this magnitude. The uh, Ralph, I think they are. 
I think you can either get the long-term picks as a separate service, which is fairly inexpensive, or as a uh, member, you, you get that, you get the long-term picks also. And so we've had a few long-term picks, um, and that will usually be, uh, right now our long-term pick is WLL, has been for a while. Uh, we had owned it to, prior to the uh, well, the big sell-off. I think back in here somewhere, right pan bottom breakout. Uh, we're, you know, we bought some more here. We closed out when it failed to come back up through the 50. We closed out half the position. And then we started buying back uh, as it broke up through the 50 here. Uh, we don't have long-term picks with the yearly membership and daily chat room. Yeah, I think so. If you're a, if you're a full member, yes, you get the long-term picks. So, uh, Don, I don't want to put it out there yet until I have done a little bit more research. It's not a very high volume stock. It's a low price stock with a decent volume, but not real. Uh, so I don't want to have, jump into it until I make sure all the details are correct. And it, don't worry, it, for members, it will be out there here in the next few days. And if you're interested in doing helping do the research, just email me, Steve at candlestickforum.com and say I'd like to do some research on the credit card company. And I'll give you a uh, a mission. V I C M. Nice J hook pattern. So this is where you want to observe the obvious, and that's why we want to learn the patterns. What's a J-hook pattern need for prerequisite? A very strong price move. How do we recognize a J-hook pattern pullback? That it becomes very indecisive and then starts curling back up. Where is an optimal time to buy? You can either buy right here as it's curling back up, or you can buy as it breaks out through this level, knowing that you're in the next uh, next price move. Uh, MDR, McDermott, I think McDermott used to trade way up in the 30s and the 40s. Another nice J-hook pattern. I would get ready to buy this. I'd put a buy stop right here, which would be somewhere around, five, let's say, 560. If it comes up through there, you're in wave three, which could be a uh, another two points, fairly substantial return. NSP. Kicker signal with a doji sandwich setup. These are very simple trades, especially if you're trading options. If it opens positive tomorrow, you want to be buying options immediately. Because if it does a doji sandwich, which would be not hard to uh, project after a kicker signal, notice the substantial move after the, of the kicker signal. Not only did they gap it up, but they gapped it way up above the previous day's open and went the opposite direction. They gapped it up above the T-line and through the 50. That tells you there's a lot of force coming into this next move. You're probably going to see this uh, in the, on the recommended list tomorrow. An MDSO, another J-hook pattern. Get ready to buy this one on positive trading. Is it better to do a spread on a J-hook or a straight call option? Uh, KC, that is a function of how much time do you have to expiration. Now, I'm looking at my May calendar, and to tomorrow is the 5th. And you've only got uh, about eight trading days. So with only eight trading days, you might have a much better uh, prospect of doing a spread uh, again, you don't want to be too far ahead of the expiration date on a spread because you're waiting for both sides to kind of move to their uh, appropriate pricing. 
which if you're buying spreads that are five dollars apart, you're looking for that five dollar uh, uh, maximum move. If you do it too far ahead, you're and the price starts moving pretty strong. The lower option that you bought isn't going to move as fast as the higher option that you sold. So for a while, you're going to be sitting in a negative uh, uh, profitability until you get closer to expiration date. I know that was a long-winded answer. Oh, Ellen, make sure that your stochastics are on on the uh, the price. And if you're having, uh, Ellen, that's a good question to ask in the uh, chat room. To Tomorrow, because there's enough people in the chat room on Lake or Swim that they can help you out with that. And if you don't get a good answer, just email me and we'll figure it out. Uh, C cap, another fry pan bottom with a doji right at the breakout level. Another very good uh, chart pattern. HQY. Get ready to buy this one on positive trading. You've got the big hammer signal. If it opens positive, look for it to do the J-hook, the uh, nice strong uh, price move. Uh, James, it all is all based upon what your risk tolerance is on which options you buy. I think I bought, I can't remember what I bought. I bought the hundreds. Uh, and I bought the, uh, I think I bought the 98. What was that? Okay, I bought the hundreds. So it all depends on what your risk, risk tolerance is. Obviously, the deeper in the money uh, that you go, the less risk you have. Um, but the the uh, less percentage gain you'll have, per percentage-wise. ICLD. These are the type that you want to uh, to be ready for because anytime you see that huge breakout. That's telling you a message. So if you're trading based upon you're trying to find the maximum activity, when you see a stock, and I can make this smaller where you can see the see what it had been doing, it was stuck below the 50. Now all of a sudden, we have kind of your best friend signal. That little spinning top doji gap up. And remember, anytime you have that signal, which is your best friend, the bigger the signal, the more compelling there's been a dramatic change of investor sentiment. Oh, and so, anyways, I'm pointing this out that this is still a buy, but it's a much more speculative buy. But the uh, risk reward at this point is. If this is blasting off, we don't know whether this is going here or here or even higher. So at this point, any buying of this one, you can do on the basis of uh, that once you're in, start trading off your 10-minute chart. Uh, Dennis, that's what I, uh, yeah, I bought that also. What's the difference between a gap up and a flutter kicker? A gap up is like what you're seeing right here. This is a doji gap up, a little spinning top gap up. 
a flutter kicker. The only one I can remember right now. Well, let me find it. What was the flutter kicker? Uh, P A C B. A flutter kicker is. Well, that's not the flutter kicker. That's more of a flutter kicker. Where you had your first day was a down day. The next day they gapped it up above the previous day's open and did a doji. And then we know the simple rule of a doji. If it opens positive and starts trading positive, it's going to move positive, which means you've had a down day and then an indecisive day and then a bullish day. Is that if you took out that little flutter, you basically have a kicker signal. Oh, RT, is that a flutter kicker? No, that was going to be more of a, uh, a doji sandwich. AF or ANFI. Yes, that's your flutter kicker. At a down day, the next day they gapped it up at or above the previous day's open, but did an indecisive day, a doji. And we know we have a very simple rule of a doji. If it, it's going to move in the direction how they open it. So if they open it positive, you're buying immediately because we know they're going to trade positive and it's going to create a flutter kicker signal, which is a kicker signal with a little flutter in here. If you took out this flutter, you basically have a down day going this way and then an up day going that way. And where was I? Said a couple more. So I see now, I didn't look this up. Another way to play something like ICLD is that it's got options that you could be buying, which means if it blasts off, you can make it big. If it doesn't, You've only got a little bit of money exposed. And a little bit of money exposed, meaning if this stock, one of these big, huge breakout situations, all of a sudden just crashes, and you bought up here, instead of being out big, you're just out whatever the cost of your option was. So that's the way to use options as kind of a, uh, uh, kind of a protective uh, trading. When you buy options, what volume do you look at? They are usually the amount of options that I'm buying, unless it's a uh, out of one of the big accounts. It doesn't really make that much difference because I'm usually buying 10, 20, 50 options at most. Um, and usually that's going to be sopped up in most of the stocks. Now, if you get into a low volume stock, and it's only trading maybe 230,000 shares a day, which isn't too bad, there might not be that much option activity. So, and you'll be able to tell that by looking at the bid-ask spread. If, you, if you've got a actively trading option uh, uh, on a stock, the bid-ask is usually going to be fairly close because there's a lot of trading going on. But if you see a stock or an option where they're bidding $1.20 and they're asking $1.80, yeah, you know that you're you're pretty much going to be uh, at the at the uh, whim of the market maker versus what the actual price of the stock is. Now, the only reason you would get into something like that is based on the chart being very strong. That even if you're at the whim of the market maker, if the stock moves big, they're still going to you're still going to make a good profit with the trade. What did I just do? W uh, PRT, there's your fry pan bottom, and notice where the fi fry pan bottom came today. Told us the 50 wasn't going to act as a resistance, and this level wasn't going to act as a resistance. Still a lot more upside. Okay, that's about all I've got for tonight. So the first question is, is there any general questions on candlesticks? Yeah, the tra transportation stocks were... Um, Uh, 
every freight company is calling our company begging for freight. Ah, well, the trans transports had picked up. I'd say it's picked up, still in that sideways mode, but it seems to have bottomed out. Oh, uh, where, how do you find your selections? Oh, in the members area, uh, there's stock picks. Uh, you go to that, and there's usually going to be two or three uh, picks each day. But remember, it's not just so you have picks. It's so that you can analyze those charts, or if I have time, some nights it's too late to do a video, but it, there'll be a two- or three-minute video on this is why we're buying XYZ. Uh, it's doing this and this, so it gives you kind of more more education. On a gap up doji and overbought, you sell half and then you set your stop at the open of the doji. Uh, yeah, that's a safe way to do it, Lori. If I see an overbought situation, uh, like right in here, it may not have been quite in the overbought condition. Let me find something that would be. If I start seeing this type of thing, I'm starting to take off half my position. If it continues higher, I'm fine. If it comes back, I close out the other half. That way I can at least sleep well, knowing that I wasn't a buffoon for selling all my position when it looked like it was time to sell and it continued right up. Or it was time to sell and like this, and then all of a sudden I'm out way down here because I didn't... Uh, didn't sell it fast enough. The stochastics are are just to uh, tell you where you are in a trend, and they're they're important. Uh, obviously, if you're buying, looking at a buy signal, buy signal is most pertinent when it's in the oversold condition. Sell signal is most important when it's in the overbought condition. Will there be another session this Thursday? Yes. I don't know who's teaching. Um, whoops. <laughs> okay. Are we not see? Are we seeing the cell? Uh, Jennifer, no. Remember, all of the adages that you hear, you don't have to take them to heart. Because if you analyze the charts, the charts are going to tell you what's happened. There's been so many, in the last few years, the old sell in May and go away made tons of money during the summertime because the markets didn't go away. What is the best way to learn the setups? Is there a manual I can oh, download? Off of? Oh, yeah. There, if you go to our products and services, Frank, there's 30 or 40 videos. The main, what I would call the bread and butter, is the 12 major signals and the, uh, the high profit patterns. And then there is the high profit, oh, let's see. I can't even remember the name, high profit pattern uh, book. Stay after a doji. Do you buy as soon as it open if it trading positive, or wait for a couple of minutes for confirmation? Oh, uh, Ender, I'm buying immediately, and that immediately may be one minute, three minutes, five minutes, just to make sure that buying is continuing. Remember, I'm not trying to buy at the absolute bottom or sell at the absolute top. I'm trying to get the major probabilities of that trade. So I don't mind paying up or a uh, position, knowing that it's moving in the direction it should be. Um, uh, and I don't mind selling after the sell signal, knowing that it's confirming the sell signal. I'm looking for that high probability fat part in the middle. Uh, 
is the bid ask of 320 to 690. And I don't know what you, I don't know what when you're talking about. Uh, um, you're talking about the options on that, Jay. Do you use the T line and the weekly, monthly charts for longer term selections only? Daily T line for short term. Uh, all of them. But if I'm picking up something long term, the T line becomes less important. I look at the other major moving averages. More than likely, it'll be the 20 or the 50. Uh, that are more important, and the the T line will be something that gives me warnings that I might need to. Uh, the the T line is telling me that there might be some trouble, so start watching to see what it does at the next if it pulls back to a support level. Uh, on S NSP, yes, that bid of three twenty asking is that six ninety. I can't tell what your second number is there, Jay. Um, oh, there, uh, Adrian, uh, uh, Jim, do you have the link for where people can go for previous uh, sessions? That's a URC. I think I am. Uh, Rick, we will be doing a private training session. They're going to be at Cuca Lake, which is the Finger Lakes of New York. You fly into Rochester. We pick you up. You don't have to worry about food. You don't have to. Worry. We all stay in the same uh, lake house. We set up the computers at the uh, sliding glass doors, so we're overlooking the lake. Uh, we spend two and a half solid days at the screens. We take our breaks by jumping in the lake. We take our lunches at the, some of the wineries. We go to there's some nice restaurants along the lake. So um, we got a lot of people in here that have done the private training sessions. It is for the person that's very serious about investing. Uh, oh, the wall chart is a Two foot by three foot poster size. Every American family should have one of those in their living room. Yeah, there's the uh, there's the uh, patterns, uh, and that's also in the book. Um, and if you've got a wide spread on your bid at or on the bid ask of a call, the worst case scenario is you put your bid halfway in between. Because on a bid spread like that, now that may be only tonight after hours. You have to see what it does more during the daytime. Um, um, the uh, I forgot what I was saying. Go bottom fishing to the lake. That's right. Oh, I did forget what I was saying. That's that ain't a fine how to do. Uh, Sean, right now we're just moving sideways until it breaks out of the wedge formation. We're, and we're, we're still heading for that trying to... Uh, how about an Andrew McCutcheon post? Don't you say anything derogatory about Andrew McCutcheon. Yeah, the bid ask spread on options. You, know, you look at them. Uh, yeah, market hours. Um, yeah, and if they're too wide, remember, you're not investing into a a trade if it doesn't make any sense. If you have to pay way up for a call, uh, remember, there's only two things that uh, that make a difference in option trading. One is your underlying chart, and two, the math. Make sure the math makes sense, and that's what we kind of uh, 
try to emphasize when we do our option trainings. Uh, the trainings at the lake are going to be the last week of July and the first week of August. We may have two, maybe three sessions. No, I'm not, I'm not looking at the, uh, no, this is just delayed. That's the daily chart. It's just delayed by 15 minutes. Okay, with that, uh, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. And in 3.8 seconds, go ahead and do the other double line. Yeah, again, that's all part of your trading options. You've got to make a decision of how long you're going to hold them based upon liquidity. If you're trading them quick, you obviously want options that are uh, much more liquid. Wabe, uh, right now, whoops, right now you can be buying this one, especially if it opens positive tomorrow after the inverted hammer today. If it opens positive tomorrow, notice you're not in the overbought condition. That means they're going right back up into the profit taking, telling you the profit taking is over, uh, that the uptrend is still in progress. 3D. Stay short. Yep. LLNW. You stay long on this one. You can see the fry pan bottom, and you can see how it broke out. With a nice doji uh, a gap up, your best friend, through the resistance level, look for a move of this magnitude. Panel. Just stay long. As long as this stays above the T-line, Aetna, you can buy Aetna, just remember it's not a very uh, wild, uh, exciting stock, but if I was going to buy this, I'd probably pay 114 for it, knowing that it broke out to the upside. Tesla, stay long on this one. Notice it's using the 200 as support. You stay long as long as this stays above the T-line, and price line, Another one you stay long in. If you're trading aggressively, you can buy this one on positive trading, which means it would be breaking out of this going into wave three. XBI. Nothing here to get excited about. If you're short, you should have covered it today. If it comes down through the halfway point of yesterday's or Friday's uh, Bullish Rami, you can reshort it. That was the same thing that I was telling the options room today. I covered the uh, short position of Vidu. The reason we were short or bought puts on Vidu was you had your doji gap down through the uh, support level. It popped back up, but if it comes back down through this level, I'm going to reshort it because that tells you the strength of this gap down is is the uh, the primary uh, indicator. CVS looks like a big dumpling top. Uh, I wouldn't be long this one, obviously. I'd be ready to short this one probably if it came back down through this level. That tells me that they failed the uh, start moving away from the T-line to the downside. Disney, not a good big percentage mover, but a good looking uh, chart where you just stay long with this one. VLTC, hold back indecisively. Notice where it closed. Still closed at the T-line or above. <laughs> Excuse me. This is your double doji setup. If it opens positive tomorrow, you want to be buying immediately. We did ha. Ha, you stay long. Bank of America, nothing. Well, I guess it's a decent-looking chart. I never really trade Bank of America anymore because of the lack of movement, but if you like this one, you can be buying this one on positive trading just as long as it stays above the T-line. And Cyprus needed to stay above the T-line. If you should have closed out, if you didn't, it has to open positive and trade positive tomorrow. Otherwise, they're coming back down to test the 200 one more time. Nubo. 
Get ready to buy this one on positive trading. Your doji sandwich set up for a breakout. And TRQ, just stay long on this one. Notice the, your breakout, 45 degrees in progress. You stay long on this as long as it doesn't close below the T-line. TSGX, DS, GX. Uh, nothing real exciting. You, if you like it, you stay long as long as it doesn't close back below the T-line. But there's probably better places to have your money. And Scamp, Scamp, you don't buy this one until it does close above the T-line. Silica. That one... You can stay long on this one as long as it stays above the T line. And if you like it, you buy it coming up through this level. It tells you that the next target is the top of this channel, which puts you right about the 200-day moving average. To you, another one that has to open positive and trade positive tomorrow to stay in it, if you're in it. If it opens and strays lower, you get out of it because now you're in a just a sideways channel. MEIP. Uh, this one you can be buying using the T line as your stop. Just make sure your volume is good. SPN. Another one. Notice how it used the 200 day as a uh, support. You stay long on this one as long as it stays above the T-line, and probably tomorrow will also be the 200-day moving average. Jamel International, a J-hook pattern in progress. I would probably put a buy stop above today's high, because that would tell you that not only is it confirming, but it's breaking out through this uh, downtrending channel. MRC. Uh, use the halfway point of this candle as your stop, which also would be the 3T line. If it comes back down through there, they're pulling back. Uh, but as of right now, if it opens and trades positive, you stay long coming out of this uh, slow curve pattern. Wabe stop, the T line. Shouldn't come back below the T line. Na na na, n n n. Nothing to get real excited about here. I wouldn't be short, and I wouldn't be long on this one. I would short it if it came back down through this level right here. Tell you they fell it at the 200. RTRX. Stay long on this one. It's in a wave three. ORBK. Uh, this one needed to get stay up above the T-line. This one you should have closed out if it came back below the T-line because now you're still stuck in this little downward channel. So this is the uh, type. This is where you use your or you try to move away from your emotions. And if you bought this based upon it looked like it was confirming and then closed back below the T-line, you just have to say this is not a good chart. Close it back out. And I say you have to use your your uh, process of getting through your emotions, that's that's why we're doing all this. If the chart is good, you stay long. If it doesn't look good, you close it right back out and move on to a good chart. Bib, same scenario. This one, there wasn't any reversal signal. This was just an up day and a downtrend. If it came back down through the halfway point of this candle, I'd be going short with the anticipation they could be taking this all the way back down to the 200-day moving average. TMST, very strong chart. You stay with it. But you're up in the overbought condition. So if they open this and start trading, or when they open and start trading tomorrow, I would put my stop at today's open because it shouldn't come back down to that level. CERN, nothing to get real excited about until you see a very strong buy signal. 
I wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one on positive trading with the anticipation that it's going back to the top of the trend channel. But unless you're just trading options, that's not a very big percent move. Hershey. Another one that I wouldn't buy until I see a strong close, meaning if it opens positive tomorrow, you can buy it. But it should not come back and close below the T-line. AMCX. You're ready to buy this one on positive trading and expect a 45 degree to come off of here. Facebook. Stay short. The Russell. Russell failed today, so it's the weakest of all the uh, indexes. So you just uh, the Russell is not picking up the same uh, strength as the uh, Nasdaq. That one you don't want to see it start trading lower because that will show weakness in the small stocks. UAN dark cloud today which means if this opens lower, it's going to come back and test the uh, uh, the T-line. QIHU just has not been able to get going yet. Nothing right now. Once it came back down through the T-line, it needed something real strong to show you that they're coming back in. Right now it's just showing you that it's going to be a very slow sideways move. ORMH. I wouldn't be trading this one. You can see the wedge formation in progress. I'd be trading something else. Whenever you can see that there's not any real strength one way or the other, just move on to a chart that has better uh, visuals to it. Silver, wouldn't be trading silver or gold right now. Both of them are in sideways modes and not anything that I'd really want to try to trade. SSL. Uh, with a gap down, I guess this is a uh, uh, ADR. With a gap down, if this opens lower tomorrow, you definitely want to close it out because you had the kicker signal to the downside with your stochastics up here in the overbought area. It's not one that I want to be uh, long. Cyber, as long as it stays above the T-line, you stay long on this one. You can see the trend channel in progress. FCX, day long, but you had a little bullish engulfing, which basically means if it opens lower, they're going to come back and probably test the T-line. Scotty, Scotty, you stay long as long as they can't close it below the T-line. CRK, All you can do with this one is stay with it. Uh, you haven't had a sell signal. You can just stay long. And if it stays above the T-line, PVH, you can be buying this one. Just be aware of the lack of magnitude of movement on it. We did Tazar, Dugley. Dugley, nice breakout. Look for a 45 degree to come off of here. Vale, Vale, uh, choppy, but uh, still above the T-line after the big bullish left-right combo. You stay long on this one. I think we did new bows, didn't we? New bow, doji sandwich setup. You can be buying this one on positive trading. Uh, yum. Yum did that shooting star way up in the overbought condition. If it opens lower... Start taking profits. Chesapeake, stay long, as long as it stays above the T-line as well as the 3T-line. SYT, that's why you always want to set your stop at, if you're in the over or a big move, set your stop at the previous open. I wouldn't be trading this one now because you have no idea what, what it's going to do. And when, whenever I see a chart where I don't know what it's going to do, I move on to one that I can 
much easier to analyze. Uh, CYTR has the potential of doing a kind of a flutter kicker. You can buy this one on positive trading tomorrow. And ACHN still just has a hard time getting out of its own way. You're still in this downtrending channel. You've got a bullish Harami. You can buy this if it opens positive, but look at your overhead. You're going to have that resistance plus the 50. So I'd be trading something else. Huda. Uh, the inverted hammer, you're staying positive, but you're still below the T-line. I would still wait for it to come up above the T-line. And Nuance. Nuance, doing a J-hook pattern. You can be buying this one on positive trading. I'd rather pay up for it knowing that it broke through this level. Sorry about that. Man, it was getting cold. Goldman. Goldman I wouldn't trade because of the lack of magnitude and movement, but as long as Goldman stays above the T-line, you know your uh, the markets are going to stay strong. Same with J.P. Morgan. Um, the percentage moves aren't all that great, but I'd stay long in both of these. Uh, SPF. Uh, this is another one that with an opening positive, that's why you wait to see what it's going to do after it opens. This opened positive and immediately started trading lower. I wouldn't get into it, until, but I'd put my buy stop back up where it opened because if it came down and then went back up through, you know, the uh, profit taking for the day was over. Right now, I would not be in that one. Atash. Wouldn't be in this one either. There's no direction to it. EQIX, you stay long. Looks like a big fry pan bottom breakout. You stay long, expecting a 45 degree to come off of here. CTSH, another one that uh, you stay, well, you look for to stop, see where the profit taking stops. If it opens positive and starts trading positive tomorrow, you can, that immediately tells you the profit taking is over. You want to buy it because there is your message, the gap up. Ford needs to get back up above the uh, 50. Not, wouldn't do anything long or short with Ford right now, but will be a long-term buyer once it gets back up above the 50. JD, stay long as long as it now gets stays up above the T-line. What did we do? XIV. Another one where you just stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. NXPI. <clears throat> uh, this one... You can get ready to buy, but I'd put my buy stop above today's open. If it comes back up through there, uh, the profit taking today is over. Bullish engulfing on this one, you can buy it on positive trading. It just needs to break through the 50, which is also this downtrending channel. OVAS, you stay short until you see a buy signal. Weeder. You stay short till you see a buy signal. In CVE, you can be buying this one on positive trading tomorrow, just using the T-line as your stop. No BACX. ASPS, just stay long on this fry pan bottom. Use the T-line as your stop also. Bonton. Bonton, I wouldn't be long or short right now. After it closed below the T-line, really hasn't shown any energy to stay up above the T-line, and you can see it's moving sideways. I'd be someplace else. 
Guild, Guild, get ready for Doji Sandwich uh, to the upside, especially after your kicker signal. Max, another uh, potential Doji Sandwich. You can buy this on positive trading, just don't let it close back below the T-line. XHB, nothing here until it does get a close above the T-line. If you're aggressive, it opens positive, you can expect a doji sandwich to take you up to the 50. INCO, that's, oh, the Indian, uh, you get ready to buy this one on positive, uh, Trading tomorrow, that tells you that the uh, T-line is not acting as resistance anymore. Uh, GNW, we're staying long on this one. Nice little steady eddy or 45 degree with the anticipation the 200-day moving average is your next target. Plax, nothing here to get real excited about. Uh, I wouldn't be buying this one now until it does get actually up above the 50. Slumburger. You stay long as long as this stays above the T-line, which means it has to open positive tomorrow to stay in it. Crocs, stay long. Notice how they use the 200 as your support, and then uh, took it back up. You stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Kroger, Kroger, nothing here until they can get back up above the T-line. How do you short, can't find stock? Uh, Charlie, that's what you have to do is uh, if you're trying to short something, if it's a low volume stock, the brokerage firm that you're dealing with may not have it in inventory, meaning in somebody's account that they've signed a margin agreement, which means if anybody wants to borrow their stock or that stock, they can borrow it from that account and then pay it back. Uh, so if you can't short the stock, then your next uh, option is to buy a put. And if none of those work, you just move on to something that you can trade. GDX, uh, is this the bearish? Yeah, very, very slow uptrend. Nothing that I'd get real excited about. Okay, I think we've got most of them. The Q's, just like the NASDAQ, is in this, is above the T-line. Oh, uh, where do you find the, it's on the, uh, if you go to the products and services, there's the flashcards, the books, the uh, mouse pad and the posters, all the all the hard stuff. Yep. Yeah, if you find something that's ill liquid, move on. Uh, the gap will always be filled. That's just kind of a general rule of thumb. However. The gap may not be filled this week, this month, this year, and we're not worried about, well, we're looking more for the gap to start the trend, and we're only going to trade that trend. After that, who cares? Uh, Mark, uh, <laughs> I don't know if they're boring. Yeah, I don't know whether I've got the fee to do, uh, uh, do the Australian stocks. Yeah, one time I was out in Hawaii for a week, and I forget what hours the markets were open. It was well into the night, which didn't matter because I was awake anyways. Eastern time. All right, let's call it a night. We'll see everybody tomorrow morning, bright and early in the chat rooms. We'll see you then.